On va euh, accueillir euh, un autre invité, il est à mes côtés. Bonjour, il s'agit de Ludovic Di Biagio. Bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur Di Biagio. Vous êtes directeur d'Otesia et du centre de recherche KTO, Schema Business School. Alors c'est vous qui allez intervenir durant les, les 25 prochaines minutes. Analyse comparative des brevets internationaux. Vous nous en parlez, on vous écoute. Ok, so uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to speak English because maybe there are people who, who do not understand French. Um, so uh, the objective of this presentation is to present the report that we have just written with uh, Otesia and uh, Schema Business School. And uh, the objective is really to understand to what extent uh, uh, artificial intelligence generates challenges and to understand better those challenges. But more than just understanding AI and the challenges, what we want to uh, explain is how uh, uh, countries and actors in the world positions what is their expertise and to what extent it uh, creates uh, a dy a specific dynamics across countries. So artificial intelligence is a general purpose technology. And as was said before in the previous presentation, it is the beginning of a rev revolution, not just because it is a technology that is useful for uh, very many industries, but also because it's a new way of doing research and development. It's a, a new way of doing uh, innovation. And uh, in this respect, the objective of this report is to try and understand better what is artificial intelligence, not as a homogeneous technology, but more as different types of technologies that combine together to explain better how it generates different applications for uh, different sectors. And the challenge of this report is to explain what are the key uh, challenges for countries and how do they position. And so the, 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 the idea is really to, to try to see how they, uh, they, 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 they specialize in different uh, applications, functions, technologies, and to what extent uh, they, they, they are positioned on, on this race for uh, the competitiveness. So basically, what we've done is that we've used uh, a large data sets. We have retrieved all patents and scientific publications in the world, and we have developed a method to understand better from those data what kind of technologies are developed for which kind of functions, as, as I will explain further, and for which kind of applications, okay? So what is obvious in this uh, slide is that uh, indeed the development of patents in the world is just huge and it's just the beginning. And what we can see from this slide fr uh, onward is that uh, you can see that there are more and more patents, that's the, 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 the purple line, and there are also more and more patent family. What is a patent family? A patent family is an invention that is um, patented in different countries. So the more uh, uh, patents there is in the family, the more valuable the innovation. What is interesting in this uh, chart is that not only we can see that there are more and more patents, more and more inventions, but the number of patents within a family is reducing, which means that there are more and more explorations. So there are, there are companies and, uh, and, and countries try to develop new applications without a clear idea about the value of uh, their patent. Okay? Now, uh, on these slides on the, on the left uh, hand side, what you can see is that the number of scientific publications that are used for developing technologies is increasing dramatically. So there is a linear uh, increase in the, the number of scientific publications, which means that science is more and more useful. Uh, but uh, when we try to understand better to what extent there is uh, a, a, what kind of development we, we have, we also use the analysis of the number of combinations of technologies within patents. What does it mean? It means that when you have a technology, it can be combined with so another technology to develop a specific invention. So when you have new combinations, this is really a creative move from the, 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 the company or the inventors that try to define and to develop new uh, functions and new applications. So here on these slides, what you can see is that there are more and more combinations 
within patents. New, new combinations, meaning new explorations, and there are uh, companies are trying more and more uh, 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 combinations. Okay. Now, of course, uh, everybody knows that uh, the United States is leading by far. So, if we just uh, uh, look at the number of patents in artificial intelligence, the United States is leading, and of course, China is the second. What is amazing is that if you look, just took China and the United States, it's more than 50% of the patents in the world. So it's the, the advance is dram dramatic. Then uh, you have uh, Japan following and South Korea. So we chose th this slide just shows how Europe is lagging behind. And I, as I will show you, this is a real challenge uh, in the future. Of course, we have to take into account that it's only based on patents. And all firms do not patent, okay? So it means that, for instance, uh, if you look at Google, Google is not a leader. Uh, uh, Amazon is not a leader, and they are developing a lot of artificial intelligence inventions, right? So that's a bias. We, that's uh, definitely uh, um, a, a, a methodological bias, but it gives a, a very nice sense of the leaderships when it comes to uh, technological that needs protection. Uh, what is also interesting in this report is to try to understand different innovation system across countries. So here what you have is the, the ratio between public and private patents. And here, that's extremely interesting to see how different countries are. So just look at the difference between France and Europe which I will show are very similar in the prof technological profile they are developing, right? But you, you can see that in France, the uh, inno inventions are really led by public institutions. So when you have uh, a, 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 a ratio between private and public uh, patents, uh, you have one public patent for two private ones, two, almost, almost three in France, whereas you have more than 12 in, the, in, in, uh, in Germany. And not surprisingly, you can see that the public sector is very important in China, in South Korea, and it's quite uh, much more limited in the United States uh, and the United Kingdom, for instance, right? So let's compare, and uh, that's a, a very nice insight of the report, is that if you compare uh, France and Germany, for instance. In France, as I said, you can see how public patents are uh, uh, very important. And on the right side, you have the collaborations in patents. So which patents are co-patented uh, between different institutions? And here you can see that in the map of collaborations, public institutions, and in particular CNRS, are prominent, and they are really leading the process. Okay? So you have, uh, at the core of this map, you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, public institutions, CNRS, as I said, but also uh, INSERM and Institut Pasteur, who are in medical science or in uh, biology. And you have all private companies at the, uh, at the periphery. If you look at Germany on the opposite, you have exactly the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the opposite directions, where you can see the, the dominance of private companies and all the collaborations are really led by the German companies, Siemens, Continental Automotive, and Audi. What is also interesting is that when those companies collaborate with universities and public institutions, generally, they are foreign institutions. They work with CNRS, but they work also with MIT. They work with a lot of international uh, uh, university. Very little, little with the German um, uh, 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 universities. Why is it interesting? Well, it is interesting because it means that there are different traditions and different organizations of innovation systems in different countries. And that may feed, uh, feed some uh, insights about the way to combine and to see to what extent there is a complementarity between France and Germany, for instance. Uh, of course, just to, to give you illustrations, uh, not surprisingly in South Korea and in, and in Japan, the public institutions are very important and they really uh, feed uh, innovations compared to the United States or the United Kingdom, which is who are really led by, uh, by, uh, by private companies. Okay. 
The other originality, uh, originality of this report is to have developed a model that tries to understand, based on patents and technology, te technologies we can find in patents, uh, uh, different characteristics of the technologies. And in particular, we try to make a relationship between which technology can be useful for which functions and for which applications. Okay, so we try to make uh, to trace all the value chain across inventions that we can find in patents, and on top of that, we try to understand what uh, to what extent they are fed by science and what are the relationship between science. That's why we call this model science, technology, function, application. Okay, so what is the 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 the, the meaning out of that? So. One sense is that uh, I just uh, uh, selected uh, uh, a small number of technologies and uh, some uh, functions. And what you can see here is that you have some applications that use one or several functions and they are based on one or several technologies. Okay? So this model try to identify in the next steps to what extent those relationships matter more or less, that is, to what extent there are more or less interdependence between different technologies and different functions, say deep learning for visual recognition, or is it more uh, widespread and there is no specific uh, tightness between those uh, different dimensions, okay? And uh, just to give you an example, because you will find more details into the report here, what I try to see is that on the uh, 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 which kind of uh, which do scientific domains are used to develop which technologies, or to what extent there is a link between a technology and a scientific domain. Okay, so when we look, we in analyze and we estimate the level of interdependence between the two, or the 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 the, 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 the strength of the wings between the two. We can see that some scientific domains, for instance, are very narrow, very specialized, and use or develop or contribute to develop very specific uh, technologies. So for instance, uh, if you look at biology, so the link with biology is only two technologies are really linked, to, uh, so sorry, two, two applications are very linked to, to biology. You have uh, unsupervised learning and in particular uh, uh, um, approaches to bio uh, bio inspired uh, approaches, right? Uh, on the opposite, and not uh, surprisingly, computer science is a very widespread and it's very useful for different applications. So we have developed this kind of analysis for the links between science and technologies, technologies and uh, functions, and functions and applications, and therefore we can trace all the, the different directionalities of uh, the, 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 the value creation. Another, uh, uh, that, that enables us to, to, to develop more uh, positioning and strategic positioning of uh, countries. So here, what we try to understand is to what extent countries are specialized in some technologies or some functions, some applications, and it gives us a sense of where they are good or, or, or bad. And uh, here, for instance, what you can see is that on the horizontal axis, you have not only the, uh, the specialization, so be careful, it's not a competitive advantage, it's not market share, it's really the level of specialization in different technologies, right? The size of the, uh, the, the, the flags are, the, the are related to the number, the volumes of inventions, and on the vertical axis, you have the growth, okay? So the growth or the market share gains uh, by, by those countries. And of course, what you can see is that you, the United States is very weakly specialized. It's not surprising because the United States is dominating almost all fields. Not quite, I will show you later, but it's, it is big indeed. For instance, if you take machine learning, neural networks, unsupervised learning, or reinforcement learning, the United States is present everywhere, okay? But uh, what is interesting here is to see how fast and uh, significantly China is growing. So uh, China is on the bottom 
uh, of each uh, figures and is growing very fast. So the United States is the bigger and China is catching up very uh, significantly. What is interesting, and you will f find more insight in the report as well, is that you can really compare the evolution of each European countries. Okay, and you are you, you will be you will see that some countries are really specialized, whereas other tries not to to specialize. Of course, we cannot say it is purposeful, but uh, we have very significant differences across countries. So, if you want to look more about these differences. Uh, we have designed figures to try to show uh, for companies, but we have done that for corporations as well, where they are positioned, where they are specialized. Again, it doesn't mean that they are dominating, but they are specialized in different areas. So here I just emphasized the, the, the co a comparison between France and Germany, as you can see on, on the slide. And you can see that they are, uh, uh, in terms of applications, they are very similar. Both are very strong in transport-related technologies. Okay, so you remember what we showed before that the innovation system is very different. It is led by different actors, public or private. However, they contribute to the same applications. That's uh, that that's very interesting. Okay, and not surprisingly, in terms of applications, the United States is quite uh, present everywhere. Now. Uh, if we look at technologies, not applications, but technologies, again, you can see that uh, France and Germany uh, is quite similar. The portfolio of specialization is quite similar. Again, it's quite surprising given the differences in uh, the innovation system. What is also interesting in the report is that you can see that some countries are specialized and probably have an edge on uh, technologies where they have a unique position. Look at uh, uh, China, for instance, in fuzzy logic. You can see that all of the countries that we have identified are very weak or not specialized at all. That is, they, compared to other technologies, they don't invest significantly in uh, fuzzy logics. So if you look at the United States, for instance, on the, on, on the right-hand side, it's very weak in terms of specializations compared to China. So these figures can show you as well where countries specialize and probably put their effort. Again, is it a strategy or is it just an emergence uh, uh, phenomenon? Uh, I think and we think that it is very insightful for decision makers and in particular the policy makers if they want to see the portfolio they are developing. So here we can see that we cannot see just with those, those two figures. But what is interesting is to look at the value chain. You remember before what we showed is that there we understand the links between science, technologies, function, and applications. And here we can see and identify the positioning of each countries along the value chain. Now, if you are weak at the level of uh, one level of uh, the value chains that is significantly contributing to one specific application, say transport, France is, is very good at transport, and they need a technology that leads to this uh, competitive advantage in transport. If they don't have the, 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 the competences, it becomes extremely difficult and probably it can be uh, interesting to know. So that's what I wanted to tell you bro broadly. Uh, again, uh, the, the report is available online on Otesia. So I'm the director of Otesia, which is the observatory for the impact of artificial intelligence. You can also find it on the, 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 the website of Schema Business Schools. And if you want to ask questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Merci beaucoup, Ludovic Di Biagio. Merci pour cette belle rencontre à nouveau. Euh, monsieur a une question à vous poser. Bonjour, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in one of your slides, uh, you mentioned that uh, the number of patents uh, per, uh, per country. Uh, and we can see in France, uh, starting uh, 2015, uh, there is a decrease or maybe a big decrease, you know, of the number of patents. Uh, is it true or uh, uh, is it a mistake of... Uh, uh, understanding. Which, which slide are you mentioning? At the, be at the beginning, you know, the France one, not this one, this one. 
I think. Yeah? Okay. No, it's not this. It's not this one. It's a private. Be, before this one. Before, before this one. Okay. This is not France. Okay. Ah, this okay. is here. Uh, what you have here is the number of publications, scientific publications that are mentioned in patents. So that measure to what extent science is useful for inventions, right? Ah, so okay. here, it's mm -hmm. just, it's not uh, 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 an absurd phenomenon. It's just because we are using databases and in the last year, they are missing data. So it's not, it's not a, a general phenomenon. Now, if you look at the more recent uh, data, no, the, the, the increase, the, the, the trend is continuing. It's and continuing, yeah. yeah. All right, but so, huh? not only the, the, the number of patents is exploding in the, fi the, the last five years, it's still exploding, but science is still very useful. And we still are in the exploration phase. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci, Merci. beaucoup. Merci On peut vous applaudir. Monsieur Ludovic Di Biagio, je rappelle que vous êtes directeur d'Othesia et du centre de recherche euh, KTO, Schema Business School. Merci.